I'm Keely Orr filling in for Jordan Moore tonight, and I'm joined by the quarterback, Max Brown, for tonight's episode. And we got a fun show for you guys. Our first guest is defensive line coach Sean Nua. The coach's interview is presented by I Trust Capital Retire with Crypto. Coach, football is back already. What is spring football like in year two? No, oh, it's awesome. You, you have an idea now how to get here <laughs> first to, to start the day, but it's awesome to have a good idea of what um, the schedule is like and everybody is. And you're breaking in uh, a bunch of new transfers in, in your room. How have those guys acclimated to uh, not only your scheme, but coming to a new school? And I'm sure they're all at different phases as well. Yeah, it, it's spring ball is one of my favorite time because that's when you can try things out and you can get to experience with the new guys and see how the old guys are, uh, old guys are progressing. So it's been, it's been fun. They're, they're doing a great job. One of the things you're trying out this spring is Corey Foreman in your room. What came about? What happened with that decision, and how did he end up in your room? <laughs> My room, uh, Coach Manning's room, we, we basically do the same thing. Mm. You know, it's just uh, for some reason he felt comfortable putting his hand in the dirt and, and, and playing in that side of the of the line of scrimmage. But um, he's a talent, so I'm trying to get him to, to break out. And I thought Coach Manning did a great job of setting a great foundation for, for himself, for, for, for Corey to, to have a breakout um, season, and he's done a great job. The first thing I work on with him is just his mindset. The mindset in, in the trenches, you got to start with that. So he's accepting the challenge, and he's doing a good job. What? Sorry, Max, what's the difference between rush end and defensive end in that sense? I guess it, they could drop. Their, their coverage um, ability is just a little bit different. Okay. But we're trying to mirror them as much as possible. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, not much. Okay. You mentioned the the mindset, and to me, it feels like you know Corey for the past two years has been one of the first guys we mentioned in basically every interview, and, and he knows the deal. I'm sure being a five star guy, you get another one in uh, in Anthony Lucas as well. Do you address that when you're um, meeting with them in terms of that expectation? And it's just different for those guys. I experienced it a little bit during my time here in terms of you're, you come here, you're expected to play right away and not only play, make an impact right away. And it's a different mindset when you, when you approach not only a game but spring ball. How do you address that with those guys? The truth. They want to hear the truth. They deserve to hear the truth. And, we tell, and I tell them the truth. We tell them the truth. Uh, they have a bad day. We tell them they have a bad day. But um, the thing that I try to do the best is make it as clear as possible, the expectations, especially from a mindset, competitive, go out there and just try to dominate the line of scrimmage. So they're accepting that role. And if there's anything that you want to make it sure it's clear, it's that part. And if they don't need it, you got to tell them. Five star, one star, doesn't matter. The, the, the standard is the standard to be, to be an elite player. You also added some veterans into your room this offseason in Keon Bars, Barnes, Bars and uh, Jack Sullivan. Yes. What do they add to, to your room in that exactly sense? Exactly that. The, just the, the experience. The experience from um, a playing standpoint. They, they played a lot of football. Yeah. So it's, it's a little different approach. You, you know, you're a little bit ahead of, of your coaching ability. When you're evaluating the portal like that, you guys knew you had to address the defensive line a little bit through the portal. And that's a quick time frame. You're making – decisions that are could drastically change the entire roster and the entire 2023 season you're you're making it in a matter of a couple of weeks it feels like what's that process like for you and having gone through it now like the, the second year here at SC did you learn anything from last year going through that portal process as well at the end of the day you want the right fit guys you know that the guys that fit your culture fit your um obviously the scheme is the last thing but smart tough guys will always make it and I've had a previous relationship with Anthony Lucas a few years back trying to recruit him when I was at uh, Michigan. So that relationship paid off. I didn't win the first time, but we got him. The <laughs> That's something I've been so impressed with by the coaching staff is your ability to identify the right guys out of the portal. What how, is there a formula to that? How have you guys been so successful at I that? I think it's the culture that you already have with, like, in-house. Mm. If that culture is right, a lot of people, as long as they're – um, that they have a, a, a great goal in mind, their personal goal, the culture will, will, will automatically make them fit in. So Coach Riley and, and, and the entire staff has done a great job of establishing that culture. So anybody that we bring in, got to make sure they mold in. You mentioned a couple questions ago, uh, you love spring because you're able to try out new things. And 
last year with Tuli uh, Tuli Pelotu on the team, it felt like you guys were trying a, a bunch of different schemes and different wrinkles with the with the player that he was. How big of a um, of an adjustment is it for you in your room that Tuli's no longer there, and maybe you're getting back to more dare I say tried and true uh, principles and, and and schemes in that regard? Has it been a big big adjustment for your room? Um, it's been good and bad. You miss a good player like that, a great player like that. But the faster you get over it, no offense to Tully, it's not like we're trying to get rid of him. But you know, the memories will still be there. But we appreciate the um, the standard that he set. It's pretty high. So you just try to you know encourage and inspire everybody else to follow through that. But everybody's their own player. There'll be no other Tully. But there could be someone better. You know, and, and that's what you shoot for. Coach Manning described the depth for the defensive front as refreshing heading into year two. Do you agree with that descriptor? Uh, it's always good when you have, I mean, just numbers alone, you know, um, you, in order to run a great operation, you got to have enough numbers for, for depth and then to have a uh, talented depth is, is, is good as well. When, uh, the past few months, I'm sure you did a little bit of a self scout as well. What jumped out to you off the tape from last year that you're trying to address this spring execution. And you know, I always look at myself in the mirror first and foremost, and I, Every time we lose, when you're a D-line coach, it's it's almost like the head coach, and and then the D-line better do good. So I I love that I embrace that role, and I just feel like we did not do a great job executing and closing out games. the The best part about D-line, you you dominate every, you can affect every single play. So we want to improve our consistency and proper execution. How do you approach that? Like, how do you? It's a concept, but then how do you apply that on the football field? You got you make sure. Why are there mistakes? And then you you got to do the best you can to to help the young guys uh, uh, approach the game to where they understand exactly what you're trying to do. Does that teaching mindset change when it's a a kid coming fresh out of high school versus uh, a, a transfer guy in that regard? Where you know one might be easier than the other. One has a foundation, one doesn't. How do you approach that? You don't want to lower your standards so they could catch up. You want to speed up your, your, your teaching progression so they could catch up to the standard because it's not like there's teams that are like, okay, well, let's start because they have a lot of young guys. Young or not, they got to understand there is a bar and they got to live up to that from execution, mindset, technique, fundamentals, whatever they got to do to, to live up to that because that's what it takes nowadays. All righty, well, you can find Coach Noah and the rest of the USC football team at the Coliseum on April 15th for the spring game. Tickets are now available, so make sure you check it out.